Hi everybody, it's Mama Kay coming at you again from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And today I'm really excited to have this iconic music educator in Manitoba. Uh, they are the first retired music teacher that I'm talking to, so it's going to be great to have their perspective on all the questions that everybody else has been asking so far. So without further ado, iconic Manitoba educator, who are you? Hi, I'm Marilyn Radikoff. I am a retired music teacher and also a phys ed teacher. And uh, what would you like to know? Where I taught? I keep forgetting that you are also phys ed, but that makes sense because your family is, has always been so physically active. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so where were all the places that you taught? Okay, I'll give you a little a quick uh, uh, outline. I first taught, I had a year training, right, Teachers College, which was how we started. And I taught one year, grade three in Gretna. And, and then I went to Varenz. I taught music grades two to nine at Varenz School in St. Patel. And then I decided uh, I needed to go to university. I would like to, and there was a phys ed program. So I registered in phys ed, got my phys ed degree three years. And then we moved to Thompson and I taught phys ed grade eight to 12 in Thompson at Artie Parker Collegiate. And then later on, I, I, I stayed home for a while and had children. And then I sort of got into a little bit of more music. And when the music teacher left Thompson, I took that job. So I taught there for uh, four years uh, at the high school. I taught the choir and, uh, and musicals. I put on musicals. And then I was fortunate we decided to come to Winnipeg. And I got a job at Glenlawn, which was just a, a great thing for me. So I taught uh, high school music there. And also a few years, I also taught some phys ed classes. And I coached grade 10 boys volleyball. And Always busy. this is how I got, this, this is how I got uh, the males to, uh, into choir. I coached them in volleyball and I had them audition for volleyball by singing Oh Canada. No. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent <Joking>. cross-curricular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> so now that's really interesting that you did both phys ed and music, but then you didn't even start off doing music, right? You started off, like you sort of, as soon as the music teacher left, you came in in Thompson. Yes. So how did that all start? Bring us way back to baby Marilyn. How did your whole oh, musical journey boy. begin? Well, my, yeah. <laughs> My baby years, uh, I took piano lessons starting when I was about grade eight. And uh, we always played piano, but I did that. And my father was a high school choir teacher uh, in Winkler. And so I played for his choir. And, uh, and then I went, I also went to uh, Mennonite Brethren Bible College for a year. And I played piano for the choir there under Vic Martins. So I'm watching conductors all the time, right? And then when I went to teacher's college, I also played piano for the choir there. So I, I always had sort of the choir in the background and I would sing in choirs sometimes too, but most of the time I just watched other conductors. And when the choir teacher in, uh, um, at Artie Parker left the job, I just took a risk and did that, and uh, that got me going. But you loved then, it enough of course, to want to take it on. Yeah, I know. I just, I just took a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it worked out to my uh, to my benefit. That's for sure. Did you sing in a lot of choirs as well, or were you basically the accompanist? I was always the accompanist. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I did take some. I did take some voice lessons in between at different different times in my life because you have had some pretty fantastic people come through your program over the years I, at least the ones i know that came through glenlawn oh for sure oh such talent <laughs> it's just it's just uh it's mind-boggling actually i look back and i see some of them are now in opera you know singing or they're in music bands that are famous and <laughs> etc well and they it's all great. love you so dearly Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now remembering that this is a, a family show, 
Would you like to share yeah. one of the strangest gigs or jobs that you've ever had? Well, I was thinking about that question and um, I think maybe one of my most unique job or gig, um, when I was in Thompson, I started a women's choir called the Aurora Singers. And um, so we had uh, the opportunity, uh, and I did that for what, 17 years? And we had the opportunity to go to Wales, and I entered the Clangothlin uh, Music Festival. So in 1977, we all, the choir went, and uh, it was just an amazing, I guess it's a unique gig. So I, I went there, we went there and had this wonderful experience, shook hands with Princess Anne, and, and, sang, <laughs> and sang at this festival, and then it was an international one. So, and we came sixth out of all the choirs. So we, we were pretty, pretty honored by that. That's incredible. So it's more unique. Yeah, that was a, what an experience, you know. It was just that one time or did you return? No, just the one time. Yeah, just the one time. Well, yeah. I think a lot of schools are really missing their trips right now. They had everything all planned and everyone's having to, to stay put right now because trips, they build so much, don't they? They build so much community and yeah. strengthen your program. I know. Yeah, we, like I took uh, my students to Banff so many years. I mean, once we started, we never stopped. So uh, I can just imagine that the, the students are just missing that and the teachers too. <laughs> Did you have a favorite festival that you took your groups to? Yeah, I think uh, I, I Banff, the, the Rocky Mountain Music Festival, that was by far the most outstanding. We, we did Music Fest quite often, uh, but when the Banff uh, uh, Festival came about, that, that was just, it's my kind of uh, uh, experience. It's just such a learning experience. It's not competitive uh, in, in, in the fact that you're marked. I mean, you're always competitive because you want to do well, but. Um, I just felt uh, we all learned so much by attending this festival. Absolutely. I know I'm still working on uh, potentially setting up a little little trip of sorts for, for my kids, but middle years, yeah. you know, it's sometimes it's a little trickier, right? The kids don't necessarily, for sure. their, their comfort level's yeah. not there yet, right? To be leaving home, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, many, like I said, many of the people that have come through your programs have gone on to to great things. What sort of advice do you have for students who might be watching this that, that want to go into music as a career? Oh, <clears throat> I think music as a career, is, it's, um, it's very fulfilling, right? And I'm, I guess I'm talking more from a, a teacher standpoint rather than a performer. Uh, I think the pressure as a performer is, is a lot greater. And uh, it's just, it's tough. Um, getting out there and, and, and being known and being hired. But uh, I think if you love music and you enjoy being with uh, people teaching band or choir or drama or any of the, uh, you know, the arts, it's just a, a great way to, uh, to spend your life. What sort of skills should they be working on building? Oh, oh boy, skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure, learn um, learn the the area in which you're working in, right? Um, and what I what I advise is um, take lessons yourself. Even when you're when you think that you sort of know quite a bit, you always have much to learn. Uh, so go to festivals. You know, like if you're teaching choir, I always say. Expose your choir to, or your band, go to festivals, have people work with them. Um, I think we have to open up ourselves to other groups, uh, share concerts together. I just felt I learned so much by watching other choirs. You learn more repertoire. You, um, I don't know, you just, you just become a better, a better teacher. Absolutely. I mean, you learn the things that you want to strive towards and you want and you also learn the things that maybe you need to watch out for by hearing other groups doing those things too right exactly exactly <laughs> yeah so any other words of advice in these weird times not even necessarily musical but 
maybe what are some of the things that you're doing to sort of propel you through uh, <laughs> the times we're in right now? Oh boy, words of advice. Well, you know, um, I, I had some other words of advice. I, I was thinking of uh, the fact that I did musicals, you know, um, try I, I when I'm watching musicals I always think too you have to know the students you have and I guess it's the same uh, for teaching band or something don't pick something that oh I love that piece or that musical and go with it not knowing what kind of realizing what kind of students you have and the and, and the ability I see that too often I think they want to do this and, and then they just put it on because but they don't have the the singers or the the actors. So I think make sure you know the level that you are working with and make that happen for the for the students. Make that fit the students rather than make the students fit what you think. Exactly. Meet them where they are, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And um and again, um another thing for advice when you're teaching is stay in touch with all the other departments of your school and i think um like the arts be a unit um help each other out you know uh i think that's so important and i think you see the schools where where the band and the drama and the music the the choral where they where they come together it's it's just it's just a wonderful atmosphere instead of trying to hold on to your own space you know and make it i mean make it good that's that's really what you want to do too but i i think if you can involve other departments of your school as part of your program it's just a a, a great way to to have a, a have your program absolutely that's um I can imagine that perhaps in high school, maybe you see a lot more um, departments like that, right? A choir department, a drama department, a band, <laughs> yeah. right? Compared to middle years where sometimes there isn't necessarily a formalized choir. Um, I'm very lucky where I teach. That's true. Um, yeah. um, there's two of us now teaching band as well as we have, um, Becky Brown is our choir and dance teacher as well, right? And it's wonderful to collaborate with, with us. Like we, we we blend really well together, right? We always were bouncing ideas off of each other and again, trying to find our different student strengths that we can work together with, so. Yeah, that, that's so important, I think. You know, and like you say, elementary school is probably a little different, but um, you know, it's still, you can be part of the, the whole school program, right? Yeah. And I always feel, I think the, what's very important and it's probably not something you can particularly choose but if you have a wonderful supportive administration boy that makes your job just wonderful yeah because absolutely. really i think yeah music and the arts it it becomes the pr for the school really no i know i'm i feel very lucky having the administrators that i that i have there they're always yeah. you know what they they let us do what we need to do they trust us yeah that's great. That is wonderful. So what are you doing during these times just to sort of <laughs> keep you going forward? Oh my god. I know again you are such an active person. It must be so challenging to to not be out and about. Oh, it is, I'll tell you, because I, I'm a person that has to get out and do stuff. So <laughs> anyways, but I, I love photography and I've got so many pictures on my computer. So this is what I'm doing. I'm culling a lot, you know, just getting rid of stuff that should not be there anymore. And so that I can spend a lot of time doing that, which is fun. But, uh, you know, I'm not much, I love games. I love tennis and, and volleyball. And of course, all those programs have been canceled for now. So <laughs> it's really tough for me. Yeah. But, but we're hanging in there. I'm watching a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're embracing your passion for the other arts. That's right. You're kidding. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Marilyn, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to us. And I hope to get to see you in person really soon. I hope so too. Thank you. Lots of fun. <laughs> talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>